All right, good morning, guys. Uh, I have been requested to make a video. Um, hey, I've been requested to make a video on how to verify ignition timing on LS engines. Now, this um, this verification should be done with all engines, not just LS engines. Uh, anytime that you build a new engine. Uh, you buy an engine from somebody, you put a new fuel injection system on, you put a new ignition box on. Ignition timing needs to be verified. It's one of the most important processes that happen in the fuel injection or, or just any time you're making power whatsoever is spark timing. And in order to do that, you need to figure out where exact mechanical top dead center is before you can even start the ignition timing process. So what I've done is I've made kind of a rudimentary drawing here um, and we have a crank pulley that, um, that we can use and I can kind of um, give you an example of how to do this and get started on it. Um, and this is going to work for every engine, it's not just going to work for the LS. Um, if you do have a, a um, crank pulley with timing marks on it and a timing pointer, that you know is already kind of in the right area, it's, you'll be fine. Um, if you don't, then you'll need to start with this process um, and use it to make sure everything is set correctly. You will need something, whether it be a timing pointer, a piece of coat hanger, a piece of mechanics wire, something to bolt or fix to the engine to give you a solid point of reference during this whole process. You also need a piston stop. Some people will tell you that piston stops hurt pistons and unless you're fucking retarded, it does not. So um, please don't be afraid to use a piston stop. When you use a piston stop, I suggest that you take all the spark plugs out of the engine so that way you're not fighting compression. You don't use a four foot pry bar. You, a half inch drive ratchet should be good enough. If there's no problems with the engine, it should roll over fine. Um, and so you're just gonna use minimal amount of pressure to roll the motor over to get close to the piston stop. And then you're just gonna roll it up, just barely bump it against it. But the piston stop is gonna screw into cylinder number one, spark plug hole. And then you need to adjust it to where you can't get the piston all the way to top dead center. So you're just gonna roll it in a little bit, roll the piston up against it. If you can still roll it all the way through, then you need to roll the piston stop in just a little further until it stops the piston and you can't continue the motion anymore. So you're gonna roll the crank over, you're gonna hit the piston stop, and then you're gonna roll it back the other way, 350 degrees, and it's gonna hit the piston stop again. This is gonna help us get top dead center. So what we're gonna do is on the engine, you're gonna bolt whatever marker you have, whether it be a timing pointer. LS engines don't have uh, a timing pointer from the factory. They have no marks on them from the factory because the reluctor wheel is supposed to be in the correct location. It has become a very well known fact that those reluctor wheels move. They may not be in the right location from the factory. They may have been installed wrong. They could have come loose. They could have rotated anything. So it's very important before you go to try to make a bunch of power out of any engine, especially an LS, that you check and make sure that, that ignition timing is happening correctly. In order to do that, we must verify mechanical timing. So we put the piston stop in, and then we're gonna figure out where we're gonna mount our, if you have a timing pointer, that's cool. Let's say a timing pointer sticks out here. That's awesome if you have a timing pointer. If you don't have a timing pointer, that's no problem. Uh, what you wanna do is get just a piece of mechanics wire or coat hanger, take out one of the timing cover bolts, bend that coat hanger or mechanics wire to give you a point of reference, bolt that thing back in there. And then now we have a stationary point of reference that we can work on with the, with the crank pulley here. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna put your piston stop in, you're gonna roll the engine over till it stops. When the engine stops, you're gonna mark your harmonic balancer or your crank pulley exactly where you have made this apparatus or your timing pointer is. So one of those two, we're gonna use this apparatus in this one because uh, this was supposed to be specifically for LS engines. So we're gonna make our mark on our timing or on our crank pulley here and then we're gonna rotate the engine backwards till we hit the piston stop again. 
So we'll rotate the motor over, roll it over, roll it over, roll it over, roll it over, and then bam, we're gonna hit the piston stop again before we get to top dead center. So you're gonna make that mark also. Then we can pull the piston stop out of the engine. When you pull the piston stop out of the engine, you're gonna take the average of these two marks, which is gonna be the middle of them. So if you have timing marks on it and you got a mark at 320 degrees and you have a mark at 310 degrees, then your actual top dead center is gonna be 315 degrees. It's gonna be directly between these two marks. Okay, so now this, I take the piston stop out, I can roll the motor back, and that right there is actual top dead center. Now, to verify the ignition timing side of it, I put all the spark plugs back in the motor, put all the spark plug wires back on it, get it ready to fire up, and I take my, you have to have a programmable, if you don't have any timing marks on this, and you don't have any timing marks on the cover, then you've made your marks here and you still have this piece on there. Do not take that off yet, whatever you're using to mark to give a reference point on the engine, do not take that off yet. And you're gonna take a programmable timing light. You'll set your ECU up on static timing of 15, 20, 25 degrees, whatever you want it to be. And whatever you set the ECU up at, you go in and set your uh, programmable timing light up at the same thing. As you can see here, I have it set up at 20 degrees. So we're gonna set the static timing at 20 degrees and fire the engine. If this is off, one way or another, this would be advanced and this would be retarded. So I know if, if it's it, if I got the timing light on it and it looks like it's like this, okay, then I know it's sparking too soon. So I'm gonna up this to 25 and let's see, it's gonna pull it back kind of close. We're gonna go 26, 27. All right, now we're dead on. So I'm actually eight degrees off eight degrees advanced compared to what the ECU says. Now I have to go in the ECU and make my adjustments in there or whatever I need to do, move my pickup, uh, move the reluctor wheel, whatever is gonna be what I feel like is the best decision to be made. Now if I feel like it's retarded, like you crank it and I'm putting the light on it right here and it's right here, uh, it's, it's moved forward. We're, we're, getting a, we're getting a flash after the mark. Then I'm gonna pull some timing out of it. And if I get down to 15, and it pulls it back straight up, uh, 14, 13, 13 gets it lined up. Then I know that I'm seven degrees too far retarded with everything. So if I put 20 degrees in the computer, I'm actually only getting 13. Um, so that's kind of a, a, a roundabout easiest way that we found to do it. Very direct, very precise. Um, and it, and it helps you figure out exactly where your reluctor wheel and um, camp, crankshaft position sensor are in correlation to each other and so you can change one or the other. Whether it be the reluctor wheel, whether it be the sensor location or whether it be just offsetting in the ECU, you need to make sure that once you've been through these steps, piston stop, roll it around, piston stop, and then you've taken the average of the two and you found the middle right there that when you set this at whatever's in the ECU for static timing, if you put it in as 20 degrees, then when you put this on 20 degrees, it shows up with your average mark, the one in the center, as 20 degrees on whatever piece of um, material you've used as a reference point. If it does not, you have to move it one way or the other, please make sure that you go back into the ECU and fix it, move the crank trigger, move the reluctor wheel. I've seen some people be as barbaric as to just offset the timing table. Like if you were gonna have 20 degrees in a spot and you know that it's too far advanced, you just back it down to 12 degrees in that spot and you just leave it, you know? Um, but I don't suggest doing that. I really like to when I pull up my timing tables to be able to look at them and know exactly what I have. I don't wanna have to do a bunch of math in my head to make sure everything's worked out right. So before you ever Try to put power to the engine. Make sure you go through this process. This is the only way that I have found to make sure that you have true TDC unless you do it before the motor is assembled and you use a dial indicator on the top of the piston or something. Um, 
but that's the only way to make sure that ignition timing is lined up with mechanical timing. When you get those off, it can cause catastrophic failure or you're not making as much power as you thought you were. Something in that whole ordeal can just be completely screwed up. So I appreciate you guys watching this morning. If you need any help, that's cool. I thought I was going to have an actual motor um, to do this on, but they're all either wrapped up to ship or they're not far along enough in the process for me to actually show this to you. So we just kind of done it with this diagram. If you have any questions, feel free to send us a message. If you need my help, um, I do travel a lot and offer services to come out and help you wherever you are. Um, if you have a problem with any type of EFI system and the car does not want to crank or run or perform like it's supposed to, suspension setup's not working the way you want to at the track, please give us a call. I'll fly out to wherever you are and help take care of it. But anyway, I'm Rob. You guys have a great day. Please verify your timing. It can save your motor. And in turn, uh, if some shit gets under the tires, it could save your fucking life.